long does it take to make a spoonful of soil? One minute, an hour, try a thousand years. Yes, you heard me right. That dusty, crumbly thing under your feet, that's a slow cooked treasure. And in this video, we are going to dig deep into the soil to learn more about what it's made of, how it's formed, what kinds exist and how it supports life on earth. So what say? Let's start digging. And what's the first thing we bump into? It's the roots. Plant roots push through the soil like tiny underground explorers. And guess what helps them do that? It's the spaces between the soil particles. These gaps are like little air pockets, perfect for roots to grow and for the soil to hold moisture and air. But our journey has just begun. Let's keep digging and say hello to earthworms. Wriggly, wobbly, but super useful. Earthworms are like nature's little plow machines. They twist and turn through the soil, loosening it up so air and water can sneak in easily. And that is what makes the soil super fertile, which is kind of like a dream home for plants. Now, apart from roots and earthworms, you will also find pebbles, tiny insects and even microscopic creatures going about their underground lives in the soil. But hey, the soil isn't just home to the living, it's also a recycling station. Let me explain. Take a leaf for example. When it falls off a tree, it doesn't just disappear. It slowly dies and then the magic begins. Tiny decomposers like fungi and bacteria move in and start breaking it down into super simple substances. Bit by bit, the leaf becomes kind of like a nutrient soup that mixes into the soil. Can you guess who slurps up that soup? It's the new budding plants. It's a circle of life happening just right under your feet. Soil, as we know, takes thousands of years to form and it all begins with rocks. Picture a giant rock sunbathing on a mountain. All day the sun blazes down on it and at night it cools off. This back and forth heating and cooling makes the rock expand and contract until it cracks and then it breaks apart. Then comes the rain. Rainwater slowly washes down these slightly smaller pieces of rocks downhill. Sometimes even landslides can help them move faster. Down at the bottom, these rock pieces get bashed up even more by sun and rain over and over again. Then they turn into gravel and then powder fine grains. And that is where things get interesting. Dead leaves fall, tiny insects, they crawl in, worms wiggle through, microbes munch away on dead stuff. And all of that mixes with the fine grains to form soil which is a rich, earthy mix full of life and nutrients. Now here's something wild. Not all soils look or feel the same. Take a walk around your neighborhood garden, a playground or a construction site. You will find soil that all look very different and they smell different. And that is because different kinds of soil comes from different kinds of rocks. And it also depends on the plants growing there, how many worms are having a party underground. All of that affects the kind of soil that is present in a particular place. Now, of course, soil is extremely precious. It takes thousands of years to form just a spoonful of it. But the scary part is that we can lose it in just minutes. How? When trees are cut down, rain washes the top layer of the soil. That's called soil erosion and that's one way in which we can lose soil. The other way is that when we build everywhere and cover land with concrete, the soil can't breathe or soak in water and hence plants cannot grow or animals can't live in that soil. 
Next, when we dump garbage or chemicals, the soil gets polluted and we can't grow anything anymore. So these are some of the ways in which we can lose soil. And because we can lose it so easily, we need to be mindful of protecting it. And here's what we can do. We can grow more plants, avoid throwing waste on the ground, use compost and most importantly let worms and bugs live. They are the true underground heroes.